The Serbian Volunteer Corps or SDK Serbian, Srpski Dobrovolaki Korpus Srpski Dobrovoljaki Korpus, German, Serbisches Freewilligenkorps, also known as Ijotacheci Lotacheci after their ideological leader Dmitri J. Ijotic, was the party army of ZBOR and collaborationist anti-partisan military formation that was raised in the territory of the military commander in Serbia during World War II. In July 1941, a full-scale rebellion by the communist Yugoslav partisans and the royalist Chetniks erupted in the territory. The Germans pressured Milan Nedic's collaborationist government to deal with the uprisings under the threat of letting the armed forces of the independent state of Croatia, Hungary, and Bulgaria occupy the territory and maintain peace and order in it. Topic Formation. On the 15th of September 1941, Nedić proposed that the government should be dismissed and allow neighboring states to police it, but Minister Mihailo Olkan proposed that the puppet government should call upon the Serbian population to form anti-communist units. The next day, 234 members of Yugoslav National Movement (ZBOR), Ijotics and Olkan's pre-war political party enlisted as the first volunteers. On 17 September the Serbian Volunteer Command was formed under the command of Colonel Konstantin Muziki, a Serbian officer. The command consisted of 12 companies, each 120 to 150 men strong. Many volunteers came from the student ZBOR organization and others were refugees from the NDH. The men wore olive green uniforms or, in the case of officers, the uniform of the former Yugoslav armed forces, with the cross of St. George on the right breast. Ranks or grade designations were for all practical purposes those of the former Royal Yugoslav Army. Weapons were mixed, besides German arms which were eventually supplied, foreign rifles and machine guns, especially those seized as war booty from the defeated Yugoslav forces were used. Mortars and light artillery were also on hand in varying quantities. The command also had an educational department whose task was to educate fighters ideologically. The head of the educational section was journalist Ratko Perezanin. It also had an intelligence section which had centers all over Serbia. The spiritual needs of the corps were maintained by protege Rage Alexa Todorovic. The corps often operated in close alliance with the Russian corps. The Serbian Volunteer Corps was formerly under Nedic's command of gendarmerie, but it was, like SDS and SGS, under direct control of SS and police leader August Mesna and commanding general in Serbia. In operations in the field, its units were put under tactical command of German divisions. Ijotic himself had no control over SDK. SDK units were not allowed to move from the assigned territory without German authorization. <laughs> <laughs> Uniform Serbian Volunteer Corps troops received Yugoslav or Italian uniforms on which they wore black cloth collar patches, rank badges on the shoulder straps, and a metal corps badge on the right breast. Their helmets were either Italian or Czechoslovak. <laughs> Active duty The volunteers saw their first action on 17 September 1941 in Drazenj village near Groka, clearing the area of communists with four Yugoslav partisans and two SDK members killed. 
In November before an offensive in the Republic of Uzedis Milan Nedic ordered that the SDK, Serbian State Guard and Kosta Pikanics Chetniks should be put under joint command. On the 22nd of November a joint military formation called the Sumadija Corps was formed under the command of Musiki. The corps was put under the command of the German 113th Division with which they fought between 25 and 29 November after the majority of partisan troops had escaped to the Italian zone. After defeating partisan troops, the Germans turned to fighting Draza Mihailovic's Chetniks. Konstantin Musiki informed Mihailovic of the German plans and Mihailovic managed to evade capture. Due to this Musiki was arrested on 9 December in Kakik and replaced by Brigadier Ilya Kukic. Nedic intervened to secure Musiki's release and he was back in command as soon as those Germans that were familiar with the case had left Belgrade at the end of 1942. By 15 February 1942, the Corps had a strength of 172 officers and 3,513 men, which was very close to the planned strength for the five battalions. During 1942 SDK clashed with partisans in southern Serbia. Although they inflicted considerable losses on the partisans they didn't manage to crush them completely in southern Serbia. In western Serbia, SDK with gendarmerie, Germans and Chetniks attacked the Kosmaj, Valjevo and Suvabor partisan battalions who had returned from Bosnia. They managed to defeat all except the Valjevo unit which escaped through enemy lines. At the end of 1942 there were 12 companies in 5 battalions and Germans granted them formal recognition on the 1st of January 1943 by officially changing its designation to the Serbian Volunteer Corps. In 1943 the SDK clashed with the partisans near Pozervac, Krusvac, Arendelovac and in Makvar. They also clashed with Mihailovic's Chetniks. On 28 September, Chetniks killed Dusan Markovic, commander of the 4th Volunteer Battalion with 20 of his volunteers and soon after Milos Vojnovic Lautner, commander of the 3rd Volunteer Battalion. On 15 May the Wehrmacht captured 4,000 Chetniks under Major Pavla Djurasic in Montenegro. Jurasic was to be sent to stray camp in Poland but managed to escape and was in Belgrade in November that year. Jurasic was soon captured by the Gestapo but under guarantees of Nedic and Ejotic was released on the condition that he put his troops under SDK command. Jurasic accepted the offer, formed three SDK regiments and became Musiki's second in command. The partisans had meanwhile grown to an army of considerable strength, and by the summer of 1943 were once again active throughout Serbia. This renewed activity greatly worried the responsible German commanders, since the strength of the occupation forces had declined considerably during the relatively peaceful months of 1942. Niedek was also aware of this problem, and went to see Adolf Hitler at Obersalzburg in the hope of finding a solution. The meeting was on 15 September 1943, and Niedek managed to secure an agreement for the reinforcement of the SDK by five additional battalions, with a further five to follow as circumstances permitted. These measures were immediately carried out, and by 20 October each of the five independent battalions had become a regiment with a strength of two battalions. Training for the five new battalions took place at the respective regimental garrison locations, SDK 1st Regiment in Valjevo, 2nd Regiment in Kraguvac, 3rd in Sabak, 4th in Smederevo, and 5th in Krusvac. Corps headquarters stayed in Belgrade. 
The SDK fought the Partisans throughout the spring, attacking 2nd and 5th Partisan Divisions in western Serbia and summer of 1944 in Toplis and Jablanis in a number of large operations. On June 21 Milan Nedić ordered the formation of the Iron Regiment in Leskovac but during its formation most troops escaped to the Chetniks. By 21 August 1944 the five regiment SDK had reached a strength of 9,886 officers and men, and from its inception to September 1944 had suffered 700 killed and 1,800 wounded in action. <laughs> Retreat and demise In September the Partisans with Red Army support began their final offensive in Serbia. In mid-September 1944, a corps unit saved Draza Mihailović and the Chetnik Supreme Command in northwest Serbia from capture by the Partisans. The major battle was on 9 September when the Partisans totally defeated joint SDK and Chetnik forces. SDK was in early October given a task to defend the Sabak bridgehead and Sava River against partisans, together with some German units and under the command of Colonel Jungenfeld, the commander of the 5th Police Regiment. On 14 October the battle for Belgrade started, and Germans decided to evacuate SDK to some place where it can be used in guarding duties and anti-partisan actions, since SDK was considered unsuitable for full frontal combat. Hitler ordered to move SDK to operational zone of the Adriatic littoral, and to put it under higher SS and police leader of OZAK, under Commander-in-Chief Southwest. Army Group F commander ordered boarding of SDK for the evacuation on 17 October on railway station Rumor, as the clearance from High Command of the Southwest was received for transport on 19–21 October. On its new position SDK participated in anti-partisan operations. The withdrawal began on 8 October during the final joint partisan and Soviet assault on Belgrade when the 1st Volunteer Regiment under Major Ilya Makarzevich and 4th Volunteer Regiment under Major Vojislav Dmitrijevic crossed the Sava River. The 3rd Regiment under Major Jovan Dobrozaviljevic delayed crossing the Sava as they were fighting the partisans in Sabak and met up with the others later in Ruma. The 2nd Regiment under Major Marisav Petrovic crossed the Sava near Obrenovac. The 2nd and 3rd Battalions of the 5th Regiment were still on the ground. When they reached Nis they learned that the Red Army had taken Alexinac and their way to Belgrade was blocked. The commander of 5th Regiment was forced to change the withdrawal plan and moved across the Raska Mountains with the Wehrmacht towards Bosnia. The 1st Battalion of 5th Regiment under Captain Vasarogrizovic held Zajica but as soon as the Russians crossed the Danube they moved to Belgrade and crossed the Sava and they became a temporary part of the 4th Regiment. Most troops met each other at Sreska Mitrovica where they awaited trains for transfer to Slovenia. Meanwhile, major changes in Berlin affected many non-German volunteers fighting with German forces. There was a branch of service redistribution by ethnic group, and the Serbian volunteers now found themselves under the authority of the Waffen SS. The order affecting the transfer was dated 9 November, but not formally recognized until 27 November. At this time the SDK composition on paper was a corps staff, five regiments each with three battalions, a signal company, a mountain supply detachment and German liaison staff. Many say that at this time that the SDK's relationship with the Waffen SS was official, but not on the ground. This is simply not true. 
The troops never wore SS uniforms, although they did wear SS collar patches and replaced their Sikarkas with German garrison caps. Some were issued Stahlhelms. The SDK's situation was quite similar to that of the 15. Kasakan Cavalry Corps, which was also absorbed into the Waffen SS at about the same time. As they reached Slovenia, the SDK troops concentrated in the area around Ilirska Bistrica and Postojna, with command being set up in Ilirska Bistrica. As soon as he arrived in Slovenia, Dmitri J. Ajotic got in touch with pro Nazi Slovenian Domobranci commander Leon Rupnik and Bishop of Ljubljana Gregory Roseman and agreed on mutual help and cooperation. SDK established volunteer schools in Ilirska Bistrica, one for officer training and one ideological. The school for officers was directed by Ajotic himself. During the settling in period, the 3,000 able bodied survivors of the SDK were augmented by released Serbian POWs, Chetniks, and members of the Serbian State Guard who had been evacuated to Istria. These new additions brought the unit's strength to approximately 8,000. Lika Chetnik Corps and Slovenian Chetniks called Plava Garda Blue Guard were also present in Slovenia and they also joined the Nationalist Front. Nationalist formations in Slovenia numbered about 40,000 armed men in total. The part of 5th Regiment that withdrew reached Bosnia in mid-November and began to move towards Slovenia. It was during the move north that an event befell the SDK which was to cripple the unit's leadership capability in the coming months. 30 to 40 officers were seized in Zagreb by the Croatian Ustase and executed. The Ustase considered them dangerous enemies of the NDH, and this was the Ustase response to the German failure to obtain permission prior to transporting these Serbs through their country. Any Serb who supported the Greater Serbia concept, as did Ijotic and his followers, was by definition an enemy of Pavlik's Croatia. SDK's first major action in Slovenia was to take the partisan-held Kras village of Kol on 18 December 1944. From 19 December to the end of the month a major encircle and destroy operation was mounted from the garrison towns of Goizia, Idrija, Postojna and Sezana aiming to eliminate the partisan stronghold in the Trinovska mountains. Nearly 5,000 men were used, including 500 from the SDK's 1st Regiment in Postojna, the 10th SS Police Regiment, Italian RSI troops, Slovenian Domobranci pro-Nazi Slovenian militia. The next campaign participated in by the SDK was against Josip Broz Tito's IX Corps during the first few days of March 1945 and codenamed Rubazal. Two combat groups were formed to strike against partisan concentrations near Lokve. The first group was called Zuschneid, and comprised three SS police battalions, elements of the 1st Slovenian Domobranci Assault Regiment, two SDK battalions and one Caucasian battalion, with a total force of around 5,000 men. The second group, Coestermann, consisted of two battalions of the German 730th Infantry Regiment 710th INF. Div, a police company and some engineers, with a total of 2,500 men. The attacking forces pushed forward from a south and west direction, and this time the operation was more successful. The partisans suffered moderate losses, and the concentration was broken up and dispersed to the northeast. However, the partisans quickly regrouped, so the Germans were forced to conduct a supplementary operation the 19th of March to the 7th of April, which proved to be the final operation against Tito's 9th Corps. 
Four combat groups were organized along the perimeter of the area now occupied by the partisans, with the task of bringing the Ninth Corps to battle by gradually advancing in unison toward the center, and thereby reducing the size of the area under their control. This was the standard German method of cleansing a partisan-controlled area, that never significantly changed during the course of the war. To the west, along a line Idrija Rijeka Grahovo Podberdo, Combat Group Blank was assembled with major elements of the 10th and 15th SS Police Regiments, 2, 1. SDKRGT, 2, 4. SDKRGT, 21st SS Police Reconnaissance Co., SS Police Company Schmidt, and an artillery battery from the LXXXXVII Army Corps. This force was later joined on 4 April by the 2nd and 3rd SDK regiments, and 1,500 men from the Chetnik 502 Lika Corps. The second group, under police major Dr. Dippelhofer, consisted of the Ljubljana SS NCO School, Slovenian Domobranci, Chetniks and a 1,200-man Russian ROA unit. This group was deployed to the southeast along the line Idrija Skofia Loka. The northern assault group, 4,500 men from the 13th, 17th and 28th SS police regiments formed up along the road between Podberdo and Skofia Loka, while a special assault force from the 14th SS division was concentrated along the northeastern side of the perimeter. The area encircled was mountainous, thickly forested, and still deep in winter snow. Once off the few roads that encircle the area, the attacking forces were faced with extremely difficult terrain that limited their progress to a few kilometers each day, inhibited contact with neighboring units, and greatly restricted the ability to rapidly bring up fresh supplies and heavy weapons. Very soon gaps developed in the line of advance, through which the main body of IX Corps escaped. Although a number of minor skirmishes were fought, and casualties suffered on both sides, the overall result of the operation was disappointing. On 27 March, General Damjanovich replaced General Muziki as commander of the Serbian Volunteer Corps and the SDK became a component of Draza Mihailovic's Yugoslav Army in the homeland, the formal name for the Chetnik forces, although the corps was still assigned to the HSSUPF Trieste under SS Gruppenführer Adilo Globoknik. Whether this change affected the SDK's relationship to the Waffen SS is unknown, but doubtful. Shortly thereafter, Hermann Neubacher, Hitler's special political representative for the Balkans, paid a visit to Ijotic in Trieste to discuss German fears about what would happen when the SDK and Chetnik forces in Istria came into contact with British and American units who were expected to move in that direction from Italy. Ijotic reassured Neubacher of the SDK's loyalty. Meanwhile, Tito's 4th Army was advancing north along the coastal road from Norvi Vinodolski, Croatia to liberate Istria, Trieste and all of central and western Slovenia. German Army Group E immediately issued orders to the LXXXXVII Army Corps to build a perimeter around the port city of Rijeka, to try to block the 4th Army's westward advance. In early April the 237th Infantry Division was rushed to the area, and within a few days defensive positions were established in a 21-kilometer arc to the east and north of the city. The 4th Army began its attack on Rijeka around 20 April with the Partisan 13th, 19th and 43rd Divisions. Although the outnumbered German 237th Infantry Division offered stiff resistance and held its positions, General Kubler ordered the 188th Reserve Mountain Division to launch an immediate attack on partisan concentrations in the vicinity of Grobnik Airfield, 16 km northeast of Rijeka. 
To support this attack, the 2nd, 3rd and 4th SDK regiments were moved up from the Postojna area. However the regiments of the Serbian Volunteer Corps arrived too late and never made contact with the 188th Mountain Division. The attack on the airfield was unsuccessful, and by 23 April it was clear to General Kubler that his corps was threatened with total encirclement. Kubler's appreciation of the situation was entirely correct, as on the 22nd of April the general staff of Tito's 4th Army ordered a flanking movement to bypass the city. While the LXXXXVII Corps continued to be pressed by three divisions, the Partisan 20th Division was brought up from Ogolin along with one additional brigade, three tank battalions and two artillery battalions. This force moved to the north, around the German defensive perimeter, and advanced on Trieste via Iliska Bistrica with the intention of linking up with the Partisan IX Corps which was pushing south on Trieste. As the battle for Rijeka moved toward its inevitable conclusion, SDK regiments 2, 3, and 4 were sent to Ljubljana and transferred to the authority of SS Obergruppenführer Erwin Rosener, HSSUPF for Corinthia, who had been appointed commander-in-chief of Army Group E's rear area. Rosener's task was to open up and keep open the road and rail routes in northern Slovenia to facilitate the army group's withdrawal from Croatia north into Austria. SDK regiments 1 and 5 remained assigned to Globoknik, who had meanwhile transferred his headquarters from Trieste to Udine, across the Isonzo River in Italy. The SDK was therefore split into two groups, one in central Slovenia under Rosina and moving toward the Austrian border, while the other was in the extreme western part of Slovenia under Globoknik moving toward Italy. <inaudible> <inaudible> Surrender and afterwards At about this time, the 22nd of April, Neubacher paid his final visit to Ijotic. A total collapse of German forces in the Balkans and in Italy was recognized as being only a matter of weeks if not days away, and Neubacher wanted to know Ijotic's plans for withdrawing and surrendering the SDK. The next day, during the hours of darkness, Ijotic accidentally drove his car into a hole that had been blown in a bridge by Allied fighter bombers. His neck was broken and he died shortly thereafter. On 29 April, as Tito's forces were closing on the Trieste area, General Damjanovic issued orders to the 1st and 5th regiments to cross into Italy, where on 5 May in the town of Parmanova 50 km northwest of Trieste between 2,400 and 2,800 SDK men surrendered to the British. The men belonging to the other three regiments experienced a less agreeable fate. They moved north from the Ljubljana area into Austria and surrendered to the British at Unterbergen on the Drava River on 12 May 1945. Twenty days later these 2,418 men were turned over to Tito's partisans. Some were executed almost immediately in the Kosevsky Roj massacre, while the others were carted off along with 10,000 Slovenian Domobranci to the infamous Centvid camp, near Ljubljana. Subsequently, these two were executed. The group that surrendered in Italy was eventually transported to a camp at Munster, Germany, where they were released in July, 1947. These men made their way to various countries around the world, including the United States. General Musaki was arrested by the Allied authorities, returned to Yugoslavia, and executed in 1946 as a result of sentences passed at the same war crimes trial that pronounced the death sentence on Draza Mihailović and a number of others.
Topic: Order of battle. Topic: Order of battle, January 1943. 1. Battalion 3 X companies 2. Battalion 3 X companies 3. Battalion 3 X companies 4. Battalion 3 X companies 5. Battalion 3 X companies Topic Order of Battle, nineteen forty four One Regiment Three X Battalions Two Regiment Three X Battalions Three Regiment Three X Battalions Four Regiment Topic. See also World War II in Yugoslavia Invasion of Yugoslavia Seven anti-partisan offensives Anti-partisan operations in World War II AVNOJ Croatian Home Guard World War II